everyone! Welcome back to our video cast! Today we are in a very special location. We're in a parking lot in Hannah's van. Her name is Linda! So today we will be talking about Anna Amalia Saxe Weimar, who was a princess. A princess? A princess. So she was a real princess, first of all, not a Disney princess. So she didn't have like anim singing animals or? No, sadly she didn't. No so. magical prince? No, so she's not as cool as we hope she'd be. But she's still pretty cool. Yes! Today we're talking about Anna Amalia Sax Weimar. Last time uh, we were talking about her aunt, Wilhelmina, princess of Prussia. And honestly, we figured we would just stay in the family because they're super interesting and very musical. Yeah, so some background information on Anna Amalia is she was born on October 24th, 1739 and lived until April 10th, 1807. So happy early birthday to her. So she married Ernest Augustus II, Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, who died and left her in charge basically so she was serving as regent until her young son was old enough to take over because the patriarchy the patriarchy <laughs> while she was regent she established one of the most influential courts and cultural centers in all of europe so crazy awesome she resided in weimar um, it only had around 6,000 residents um, but what's super interesting is that some of these citizens are well-known composers such as Liszt, Karl Maria von Weber, and Nietzsche. So Anna Amalia being patron of the arts and literature provided a space for some of these composers to come together like Herder and Schiller. And Abel Seiler's theater company, which is a huge deal. They were employed at her court, um, which is crazy because they are the biggest and most famous theater company in Europe at this time and they had a ton of plays commissioned for them. They're over here completely influencing the theater scene, which in turn is changing the opera scene, which is important because we're about to talk about opera. Um, they even published a singspiel that greatly influenced the magic flute. Ooh. And also we have to talk about Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. He was one of the hotshot writers of the time who collaborated with several famous musicians. Um, Anna, Amalia, and Goethe actually knew each other really well. Um, he lived in Weimar, frequented their court, and was eventually ennobilized by Anna Amalia's husband, Ernest Augustus. Goethe honored Anna in his work, Zum an die Kinder Fürstin Anna Amalia, and she wrote a singspiel on his libretto to Erwin und Elmire, which we are about to talk about. That libretto was also scored a year before Anna Amalia by a male composer named Johann Andre, but as I like to say, first is the worst, second is the best. <laughs> so we've been actually throwing around this word singspiel, and I think we need to go ahead and explain it. It's a form of German opera. A genre within a genre within a genre. Typically, singspiels involve some some form of spoken dialogue. They usually have happy endings, silly characters, uh, fantasy or magical elements. Actually appeal to the lower and middle class because unlike popular forms of like other forms of opera, the main characters are lower born. They're not nobility and princesses, not Aida. And that's really interesting considering Anna Amalia was a duchess and a princess and extremely rich and high born so she right. could not relate <laughs> at all <laughs> so but, it's the struggle <laughs> <laughs> but in this opera elvire a noble lady is grief stricken because she believes that her cold behavior has turned away her lower born suitor Irvin. she complains about it to her french instructor and he basically plays matchmaker and tricks elvire to confessing her feelings to Irvin, while Irvin is disguised as a hermit. a hermit so he's a real he's a great wingman <laughs> Basically. So let's go ahead and listen to this Act One aria by Elmir. In this scene, she is lamenting her sadness to her French instructor, Bernardo. <laughs>
that was pretty cool. Um, I definitely heard that Baroque inspiration